What's going on everybody? I'm back in the kitchen this afternoon. Um, today I have a really rare treat uh, that I don't get to have around here um, too much because I don't hunt. But I've actually got some fresh venison from a friend of mine. And um, so we're going to be cooking up some of that tonight. I'm going to be cooking up some of the, uh, I've got backstrap and some of the inner loin right here that he gave me. Um, I've also got some hindquarters and stuff in the fridge I'm going to cut up and put in the freezer uh, for a later use. Um, but I'm just going to cook this tonight. Uh, it's been a long time since so I've had backstrap. Uh, I'm going to be sous vide it to begin with and doing a reverse sear uh, on cast iron on the grill. Uh, so it should come out super tender, super juicy. Um, venison is very lean, so a lot of times it tends to dry out. So doing the sous vide first and then reverse searing it should keep it very moist, um, very flavorful. So I'm going to go ahead and get the... Uh, bag made up to get in the sous vide machine to where you can be cooking. All right, so as I said, I've got uh, backstrap and inner loin here that I'm gonna be cooking tonight. I've already taken the opportunity to um, season it up with a little bit of fresh cracked pepper and uh, kosher salt. And so in the sous vide bag that I've already made up, these are just vacuum seal bags um, that you can cook in in the sous vide water uh so i've already made up one that i'm going to be putting all this stuff in uh i'm just going to have the venison i'm going to have some fresh rosemary and some fresh crushed um cloves of garlic in there plus a little bit of red wine and so after that gets done cooking i'm actually going to take that liquid that's left after cooking it and use it in the sauce that i'm planning on making all right so i'm going to take some of these cloves of fresh garlic i'm just going to take the side of my knife and smash them down because we don't want to make it real small it will infuse way too much flavor this will give it a little bit more subtle flavor in the bag um, just want to make sure some of the pieces are spread out I did this the other day with a ribeye steak and you could tell where the garlic was sitting on the steak because there was super garlicky flavor right in that spot but then further out you didn't really get much of the flavor so I'm gonna go ahead Put the back straps and the inner loins in the bag. So you want to have it a nice flat layer to where it cooks evenly. So now we got that stuff in there. I'm going to add some of the fresh garlic, try to make sure it's spread out as evenly as possible. Actually, a little bit there. And I'm going to actually flip it over for and make sure I get some on the bottom side. It's somewhat evenly dispersed in there. All right. Then I'm going to take a couple of sprigs of fresh rosemary. Daddy. Hey, sweetheart. And my little hey. girl over here watching me in the kitchen. Huh? All right. Got the rosemary in there. And now I am going to add. Daddy. Got some red wine here. I'm going to add just a little splash in here. Daddy, give me a hug. <laughs> I'll give you a hug in just a second, sweetheart. Daddy's busy cooking. So we want just enough to kind of coat the meat, but not really overpower. So I'm just do just a little touch more. Then got my vacuum sealer over here and then since there is liquid in this I have it set to a gentle mode where it won't suck out all the liquid all right so now we're good to go we're actually just gonna take and I've already got my sous vide set. It's at 130 degrees and we're going to be cooking this in here for about two hours. Uh, that'll give us probably about a good medium rare to medium uh, temperature for whenever we reverse sear it. Uh, but it will be fully cooked. Um, it'll be super tender after going through that for a couple of hours um, sitting at that low cook. Uh, so now we're just going to sit here and wait on to cook before we reverse sear it. All right, so the venison has actually finished up cooking in the sous vide, um, but it's not gonna hurt to sit there in the water and actually keep on cooking because it's gonna stay at 130 degrees. That's the beauty about sous vide. 
kind of hard to overcook anything because it stays at a constant temperature. So we're just going to let that ride in there while I fix up uh, the side that we're going to have with the venison. I'm actually going to do a roasted uh, winter vegetable mixture to go with this. Um, so I'm actually going to cut up the vegetables real quick, put this in fast forward for you guys, get through it and then I'll show you the next step. So for the uh, root vegetable mixture that I'm actually gonna make with this, um, I have a uh, rutabaga, sweet potato, parsnips, and uh, carrots. Then I'm gonna add in some uh, fresh thyme and chop up a little bit of fresh garlic in there. And uh, we're gonna mix it all together with some olive oil. Um, so let me get these vegetables cut up. So I got all the vegetables cut up um, and everything in the bowl. So like I said, I've got my fresh garlic chopped up in here. I just picked the leaves off the thyme, left it whole. Then like I said, carrots, sweet potatoes, rutabagas, and parsnips are in here. And you want to keep all the sizes cut about the same size where everything cooks evenly. So before we get this in the oven, we're going to toss a little salt in here. This is kosher salt, like I always use and then some coarse grind black pepper. Then we're gonna hit it with just a little drizzle of olive oil. Just enough to kind of coat it, but we don't want it drowning in it. So now we're gonna give that a toss. Make sure everything is 
even when you get those are really mixed up. And then we're gonna put it out on our pan. I have this lined with some uh, parchment paper. I try not to use too much aluminum foil when doing stuff because this actually sticks a lot less than aluminum foil. I'm gonna take that, spread it out. Nice even layer. I've got my oven set to uh, 425 and we are going to pop them in the oven. These are probably going to take about 45 minutes or so. I'm going to have it on the middle rack in there. I'm um, going to get a couple stirs every now and then just to make sure everything gets evenly browned and cooked um, and just keep an eye on it. So while the vegetables are cooking, um, I'm going to get stuff ready for the sauce I'm going to make for this. I'm going to be using some baby portobello mushrooms right here. And um, this is actually a demi-gloss base. Um, normally I would actually try to make my own because I always, I'm a little bit picky about my demi-gloss. But um, we actually sell this where I work. It's actually a pretty good substitute whenever you can't make your own because it takes a lot of time to make true demi-gloss. Um, it's actually like a 24 to 48 hour process most of the time. So doing this in a pinch because this is kind of a last minute plan for dinner tonight. And um, just add water to this. Um, we're gonna cook up the mushrooms, add that in. We're actually gonna use the liquid that comes out of the bag from the venison cooking and add into the sauce for a little extra flavor. So let me get this prepped up and I'll be right back. All right, so we got our mushrooms chopped up for the sauce. Um, we got the demi glace, just got the lid off of this. Um, so we're actually gonna do six ounces of water to this amount of the demi glace. And um, I actually took the mushrooms up, cut them in half, and sliced them up just because I want them a little bit smaller. I didn't want big, huge pieces in the sauce. Um, so now we're just waiting on, I've actually got my grill heating up, and I'm waiting on these root vegetables to get done before we continue any further. All right, so we're going to pull the venison out of the sous vide water now, um, get it cut out of the package, get it ready to go on the grill. I've got my pan heating up out there, and then um, that way we can go and get this liquid uh, in use into the sauce. All right, so we're gonna set this off here and cut open this bag just a little bit so we can drain off the liquid without getting much else from that. I don't want any of those garlic pieces or anything. So drain off all that liquid and save all that good flavor. Right, open it the rest of the way and pull out our venison. Nice and firmed up now. So I'm just trying to get all that garlic and rosemary. Just keep it in the bag because we're going to trash that. Got all our nice little pieces here. <laughs> My daughter's being silly in there. All right, so the venison, we're just gonna let it rest here for a minute until we're ready to sear it. We're gonna pat it dry. That way we get a nice crust on it. If you have any kind of moisture on there, the more moisture you have, the less of a crust you're gonna form whenever you go to sear it. So you wanna dry it off as much as possible. So it doesn't look great right now, but once we put it in the pan to sear it, it's gonna take on a nice color. All right, so I've heated up a pan with a, a tablespoon, a tablespoon and a half of butter and a little touch of olive oil that we're gonna go and start cooking our onions. Or not my onions, my mushrooms, sorry. Gonna give them just a little touch of salt. We don't wanna add too much because we have the liquid from the venison, plus the stimming glass we're gonna add in. This probably got a decent amount of salt in it. So I'm going to add a touch to help put these mushrooms down, but we're going to try to get a nice little brown on these. I have them at about a medium high heat. Alright, so our mushrooms have got cooked down now. I've got a little color to them. I'm going to hit the pan with just a little touch of red wine. Simmer down. I'm gonna go ahead and add in the liquid from the venison bag. I'm gonna 
add in the water to dilute down the demi glaze. And then we're going to go ahead and add in the demi glaze base. Get it all scraped out of there. You know, all that flavor. All right, so now we're just going to wait on that demi-gloss base kind of incorporate with all this liquid and then we're going to cook it down to a nice consistency once we get it down to the consistency we want we're going to mount it with just a little bit of butter for a little bit of mouthfeel and richness at the end and then this will be done right, while we wait on our sauce to cook down you can see our vegetables are coming along nicely starting to get a little brown on there sizzling real nice and it should be yeah, they're softening up quite nicely, so not too far from being done. Alright, so I felt this sauce needed a little sweetness added to it, going with the venison. Um, so I have this actually uh, blueberry bourbon um, preserves. That goes great with cheese. Um, I actually happen to have it on hand, so I'm actually going to add this in there um, for a little bit of a bump in flavor to uh, pair well with this venison. All right, so I got that preserves added in there. Added in probably about a tablespoon, a heaping tablespoons worth. So we're gonna let this keep cooking down. So this should actually really bump the flavor on that, give it a really nice depth. All right, so it's simmered down now. It's thickening up quite nicely. The blueberry <clears throat> blueberry preserves were exactly what the sauce needed. Um, it was a little unbalanced, and that little bit of tartness and sweetness really kicked the sauce up a notch and uh, balanced out the flavor well. It's just a little bit too more on the salty side um, and I like to kind of balance things with a little bit of sweetness or tartness if um, I'm doing something gamey like this. So we're going to cut the heat off, we'll let that stop bubbling for just a second. I'm actually just going to move it off the heat over here. Just a second. We're going to add in just our little bit of butter to add that little bit of mouthful and richness there on it to complete the sauce. And Quick little final taste, see if we need to adjust anything else. No, it'll be perfect right there. Plenty of salt, just a little bit of hint of pepper. So the sauce is ready. We're gonna set it off to the back, let it chill for a little bit. And we're about to go do our sear on these and we'll be done. All right, so we're gonna do our final sear out here in cast iron on the grill. It's super hot right now. I'm going to try to stay out of the light as much as possible. I'm out here cooking in the dark, so I have a light set up. Trying to give me plenty of shooting light. So we're going to add just a little bit of canola oil to the pan. <clears throat> Swirl that around. Cooking over charcoal, so hopefully this might impart a nice little smoky flavor to it. The pan's nice and smoky like you want it to be. So I'm going to add some... Add some soaked wood chips for some added smoke flavor while it's cooking. Ooh, that fire is hot. Back over here, make sure the oil's nice and coated everywhere. So that smoking is what we want because we want a nice quick sear on the outside of this. And then we're going to hit it with a little butter and baste it. That's the sound you want to hear right there.
So we're not want the internal temp to cook much more, so we're only gonna do it about 30 seconds on the side. I'm actually going to close it for just a second and try to let it get a little bit of that smoke in there. Searing up very nicely. Nice brown. So we're going to go ahead and turn that. We're going to get all the sides seared. Let's get the brown on it. I actually have some fresh rosemary, a couple cloves of garlic, and some butter right here that we're going to baste these real quick to add some richness to the meat and some extra flavor. Just want to make sure we get a good sear. Alright, so we got our nice sear. Actually about to start basting it real quick. Go ahead and drop in a piece of rosemary, garlic for a good start. Go drop that butter in. Do is that butter melts. Get that butter around so it'll melt. That rosemary smells absolutely amazing. So we're basically treating these like a steak whenever we reverse sear it. We're gonna be basting with that melted hot butter over everything. Just kind of help cook everything evenly. That butter is basically going to be infused with the fresh rosemary and garlic. A little bit harder to do this on the grill out here like this and trying to film, but I'm going to make it do. Man, I can't wait to eat this. Brown up nicely, then infuse, set this off to the side. We're going to pull our meat from the pan. Now we're just going to take it inside and let it rest, and then we will plate. There you can see our vegetables got roasted up nicely. Those are all done. Got our sauce, and now we're about to slice up the tenderloins. All right, so everything's rested up now, so we're gonna go ahead and slice this up. It's nice and tender, still a nice red inside. This is gonna be great. That's perfect right there. Nice about medium rare, medium consistency on it. This is what you want. All right, so get some of our root vegetables. I'm gonna put them slightly off center from the plate. Organized here, and we're going to take some of our tenderloin, rest it against it, lay it out just a little bit. Kind of coming around. We're going to take some nice, nice big spoon of our sauce, just go around top, and drizzle a little bit of that extra sauce around. Alright, and then there's dinner. Can't wait to dig into this. Thank you guys for watching. Stay tuned for more cooking videos come. I'm actually going on a fishing trip tomorrow. Hope to catch some fish and hopefully have some uh, another catch and cook coming up. 
Um, catch you guys later, and thanks a lot.